This is going to be tough. Um, I rehearsed the speech about a thousand times. Unfortunately, my, at my advanced age, I forget real quick. Um, I relate that to when Bill and I would go to uh, lunch, which was about twice a week. Uh, we'd order lunch, and we'd kind of laugh because when they brought us lunch, we forgot what the hell we ordered. So I'm going to kind of wing it here. The first time I met Mel, long before a lot of these guys met him, he played at a place called Burlington Junior College. I was at Drake University and they were playing Grandview Junior College. And we'd heard about a teammate of his that was an All-American. So our feeder system, we got a lot of uh, junior college people. So we went over to watch, him, watch this guy play. Well, our little buddy stole the show. Uh, here was this uh, tall, gangly, deep-voiced, wild man on the court, and I was just sitting there watching him. Uh, he tried to hurt everybody except the cheerleaders that night. He was he was well, terrific, and so I went back to uh, our coach and said, "You got to see this guy. We need to get this guy." Yeah. Unfortunately, that year, uh, I think it was Bob King in New Mexico uh, yeah, okay. snatched him before we could get a hold of him. And it's kind of ironic a few years later, of course, we become teammates. When I played, started the NBA, he played in Minnesota. And I did not like playing against Mel at all because he wasn't dirty. He was just vicious. And if you played hard against Mel, you came home with many injuries that night. I think I had the mumps that year. And I missed three games against Mel. And I hate to say it, the mumps were held up better than playing against Mel. He was that tough. The next summer, we got him in a trade, which, as far as I'm concerned, is the greatest trade the team ever made. We had some really good players, but we weren't a team. We got a coach named Slick over here, who I had many nights out, begging him to come coach our team. And here comes Mel. Mel took a bunch of players and molded us into a family. We became Instead of a bunch of great players, we became a great team. And we kept playing and playing and playing, winning. And I relate everything to auto racing. I thought Mel was the fourth tire on the car. We were missing one big tire. And he was that big monster, right rear tire, if you know what sprint car racing is about. And as we, as we went on, of course, your tires get a little worn. We need some new guys. We got a guy named George McGinnis. Oh my God, how good was George? We got Darnell Hellman, we got Billy Keller, and we had a great, great run. Uh, I can say this with a fact, I think I'm echoing a slick statement. Had Mel Daniels not become a part of this team, and along with the other guys, you would not be sitting here right now. There wouldn't be a Colts. The great downtown probably would be a lot on down the road, so to speak. And the city wouldn't be as great as it is. In fact, we had a Super Bowl. Look at this town. It's one of the best sports town in the world. And this guy right here was a huge, huge part of it. As a person, if you first met Mel, and I don't know how many people met him without really knowing him, pardon my language, he scared the crap out of him. He was big, gruff, low voice, sullen. I used to use a word, I called him crotchety. I think that might ring a bell with everybody because he was crotchety, even with me. But once you got to know him, once you got past that rough exterior and you became his friend, there would be a no more loyal, finest guy that you I mean, I can't go on and on. I had notes written and I wrote some notes, but I can't read my own writing, so I can't remember half the stuff I was gonna say. But I used to take a lot of pleasure when he and I'd be out and some big guy would walk up and say, Hi, Mel, and shake his hand and watch the guy slowly turn red. Tears start coming out of the guy's eyes when he tried to pretend he wasn't dying. Mel used to do that a lot. Um, when he went in the Hall of Fame, I, I found out from a certain source that Mel had made the Hall of Fame. Matter of fact, I've got sources here, but I won't reveal it, of course. And I called him up, and he wasn't, he, all he talked about was, why me? It should be Slick, it should be Roger, it should be George. He was that kind of guy. I never heard him, heard him toot his own horn. 
All the ranch said he was bodacious. Nah, it was Mel. He, his teammates were much more important to him than any personal fame. He, if he went out one night, got five points and five rebounds, he didn't care. All he wanted to do was win. And baby, was he driven. I've never seen a guy, when he walked on that court, the lights went out, he was pure, 110% professional. He played the game to win, no messing around, and if he hurt you, tough. He hurt me and I was on his team. So he's one of the great ones. And I'm not going to sit here and talk. If I told Mel's stories, we'd be held to here till New Year's, so I'm not going to do that. But I know for a fact, somewhere in this arena, he and Roger are laughing their butts off at me and making fun of me right now. But he's up there with Roger. And I'll tell you what, guys, I can't wait to join you, but I'd like to wait a little while. He was, I was very blessed to have him as my teammate, my friend, and my brother. Uh, I think all you fans for being here, he loved you guys. He thought you guys were as much of the team as we were. I'd just like to say thanks for coming, and God bless every each one of you. Thank you.